Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through how to import campaigns from Google Ads into your Bing Ads or Microsoft Ads account. Pretty quick, painless process, but feel free to stick around if that's what you're looking for. Please consider subscribing if you like this kind of content and you would like to see more of it moving forward. Thanks. Importing your campaigns from Google is one of the easiest things you can do to mimic your strategy from Google to Bing. And 90% of the time, most of the campaign settings and bids and all that sort of stuff is going to be exactly what you're going to want on Bing. So I would highly recommend that you import those campaigns over because it's really easy, painless, and it just typically makes a lot of sense. So in order to start importing your campaigns, head over to the Bing Ads platform. I'll have a link down below in the description if you want to get over to Bing. And then you can easily import your campaigns by looking at the toolbar at the top of your screen. Click on Import and then Import from Google Ads. Now. Microsoft slash Bing makes this really simple where you can follow these prompts to just import your ads. So if you just follow this wizard here on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll easily be able to start importing those campaigns. Um, don't just mindlessly go through and click on some of these those because a lot of these settings are very important. And if you do not set them up properly, you could start targeting a pretty, pretty large audience. So you're gonna wanna continue, make sure you're signed into Google. Very, very easy. Um, I typically like to choose the campaigns that I import and not import everything. You may have different campaigns and targets that, that you may be hitting on Google that you do not want to import. And you can always import more than once, so remember that. Just because you import one time doesn't mean you can't do it again in the future. So if you go to import specific campaigns, you can choose exactly what you want to import and the ad groups you want to import. So. Um, I, I have a YouTube slash display campaign. Obviously, I don't want that campaign over to Bing right now. So if you just want to import um, your search campaign or, um, you know, even display, you can do that. Or shopping is typically really easy and has a one to one um, connection as long as you have Merchant Center set up. But if you just check the campaign that you want to import, um, it's as easy as that. So I'm going to choose to import my test search campaign. Go to continue. And now it's going to start asking me, what do I want to import? Now, the defaults in most cases are pretty good to go, but I'm going to take you through each of these options just so you have a deeper understanding of what they do. So these account level URL options, you likely will be able to leave this blank unless you want to append some kind of tracking template that you can define below. If you do not know what that means, leave this option blank. That, that just means you're able to append like specific UTM parameters to the end of your URL. So keep that blank if you don't know what that means. If you do want to update that, that make sure you check that box. Um, you can also choose this to say if something has not previously been imported to Microsoft Ads, you can go that route. If you click on this option here for advanced options, you can choose exactly what you want to import. Um, this is very helpful if you don't want to move over your negative keyword lists. Um, some of the samples you may not want to import over like labels. Um, sometimes the labels can get pretty convoluted and you may want to simplify them on Bing, for example. Um, so really go through this list. I would say for the most part, this is good by default. Um, and you can likely leave it. Um, you just may want to consider not checking like some of the page feed stuff. So um, for most of you, if you leave this option checked, you should be good to go. And then you can also update existing items. So if you've imported one time, you can then import it again because Microsoft will tie this to the campaign ID from Google Ads. And then you can easily import stuff on the regular. So it's, it's pretty easy. Um, do not check this box. I, I would recommend not doing it because it's going to delete stuff from your Google Ads account. So it's delete items that have been removed from your Google Ads account. So don't leave this option checked. You don't want to go that route. Um, you can then also create a UET tag, which again, the UET tag is the Bing tracking tag. I'll have a link somewhere on the screen where you can learn how to create this for your Bing account. This is essential for creating audiences, ensuring that conversion tracking is set up. So there'll be another video on the screen. Make sure you click on that if you want to learn more about um, tracking on Bing specifically. Now, now here's the most important part in my opinion is the bids and budgets. Microsoft has minimum bids that you need to comply with. On Google, you can go bid a penny, for, for example. Um, but on Bing or Microsoft, there's actually minimum thresholds. And I don't know exactly what that threshold is. I want to say it's like five to 10 cents. But if you have like a penny bid, which you likely don't, but let's just say you do, there are instances where 
you would want to make sure this box is checked. So if you do have a very low bid, it's going to increase that bid. But um, some of the, the strategies that I recommend for bids and budgets on Microsoft specifically is increasing your bid modifier on Bing because the competition tends to be a little bit lower and you can dominate the impression share on Bing specifically. Not like you may be able to on Google, just because it tends to be a lot more competitive on Google. So if you import, you can import, change your bids, you can decrease them too. But let's say you want to say like, I want to dominate Bing because I'm a B2B industry. I know my clients are going to be on Bing more than Google. You can increase your bid modifier by, you know, any percentage here. So you can be extremely aggressive on Bing in a ridiculously easy way. So I typically recommend checking this box if your client is a B2B client and you want to just like increase your coverage here. So this is going to take your bid from Google and increase it on Bing by whatever percentage or decrease it by whatever percentage. You want to update your bids. If you have specific bidding strategies, you can obviously make sure that those are updated. Um, Bing does have things like um, target CPA and target ROAS. I've seen varying levels of success on Bing. So use this option wisely. I typically leave it checked and then monitor. Um, the minimum budgets as well, like I mentioned, uh, they have minimum bids and budgets, so ensure you have that. And then um, I typically leave those other options good to go. And then what you can do, as I mentioned earlier, is you can append like tracking templates to the end of your URL. So if you want to do like, you know, um, UTM source, if you're not calling it Bing, you can call it something else. Like, I don't know if you would want to call it like Microsoft ads, you could go that route. But if you want to get really fancy with your UTM parameters to ensure that it's linking up with like a CRM, like HubSpot, you can obviously do that here and then append stuff at your campaigns really easily to landing pages. You can do tracking templates to make sure that's updated. Um, there's a bunch of other options. You can also choose not to update your campaign names. I normally like to pause my campaigns when I first import them because if you're importing a massive account make sure you check this box because typically you want to import it you want to review it and then you want to be the one who manually posts it if you're working on a client account or if you're working for um, yourself or, or, or your business do not blindly go and import and hope that everything is going to be okay that I'm, I'm assuming you're not doing that anyways if you're watching this video but pro tip make sure you check this box to ensure that you're pausing all of the campaigns and then you're going in to manually update them um, and then otherwise, I mean, you're pretty good to go from this perspective and you can just kind of continue. Um, the other really key part here is you can tell Bing how often to import. So we have some clients where we just import it once and then we manually optimize Bing on a regular basis, which again, just because a strategy works on Google doesn't mean it's gonna work on Bing. So typically you wanna do like a one-time import, see how Bing's working. But if you're noticing that your strategy on Google and your strategy on Bing are pretty close to the same, you can have this so it imports every single day and then Every day at 10 a.m., you can have the same import come. So like if you add a negative keyword on Google, within 24 hours, that same negative keyword will be added on Bing. So use this option wisely because you need to remember in the back of your mind that if you have this sync happening on the regular, it's going to be mimicking strategies. And if you increase your budget on Google, it's then going to increase on a Bing. So keep that in mind. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do this once. Um, you can even do it now if you want. So we can just do it one time. Then you click import and then you're gonna get a fancy little dialogue box that pops up here um, and it'll take you through the process. While this is going, again, if you enjoy this type of content, I think only right now 98% of the people who watch this video are subscribed. If you really find these videos helpful, it'd mean a lot if you did subscribe. Um, just trying to keep pushing out more relevant content for um, the people who watch these videos and I hope you find them useful. Um, so there we go. You can see Google Bing has said, congratulations, we've now imported your campaigns. We have no issues. Um, you'll then be able to look at this log here and you're going to want to keep a real close eye on this deleted column and the skipped column, because if something happens here, you're going to want to review it. Um, but then you can just click view imported campaigns. Go review those campaigns one by one, ensure that they're good to go. And then when you feel like you've ran through your campaign checklist and things are ready to launch, you just click this, uh, this drop down, enable the campaigns and start serving.
That's about it. Bing is a pretty useful platform when it comes to targeting the bottom of the funnel. Don't sleep on Bing. Your clients and your customers are definitely on Bing. So make sure you're, you're testing it out, allocating some of your budget here. Um, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. I'm happy to answer them um, at Ray Sawville on Twitter. Let me know. Um, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Yeah.